Ave, and welcome back to Provis Gaming and more Imperator Rome, the redemption of Epirus. Conquered Crete, got a bit more of southern Greece. Now we need to decide how else we are going to be expanding. Want to fight Mastodon? Can't do so, especially if he's guaranteed by a bunch of different people. Easy way to get around that is to declare war on his vassal subject. Yes, Mastodon would be called in as the overlord, but... While they would get to call in their own allies, like Messenia, I don't think that the Guaranteers would be able to jump in and defend. Which would certainly make my life easier. And if I could call in Thrace, that'd be great. But they don't seem to think that the war balance would be in our favor for some reason. I wonder if I could change that by training up some more troops right now. Like, if we trained up, say, a few heavy infantry. One, two, two, three, four... Eh, five, six. And then maybe some light in uh, cavalry. One, two, three, four. Uses up a bit of manpower. But that would give me enough cohorts that surely you would think that we are in a commanding position, right? And the downside is fighting Messenia. Who I do want to kill. Easy way to kill Messenia in separate war would be to attack Dardania. If we attack Dardania, we get to kill Messenia. If we kill Messenia, then we can go and deal with your subject, right? I think. That might be a good play. Um, we're going to go ahead and move the troops up in that direction. I think I will keep some down here by Messenia so I can jump on him and kill him. But we're going to have a bunch of extra troops. We'll use them to go and kill Dardania. Then we'll kill the subject and kill Macedon, and hopefully no one messes with the alliance networks. But of course, because we did reload the game, that sort of thing does happen. A Tale of Two Cities. The very nature of autonomous city-states often leads to disagreements between neighboring authorities. In this case, the scenic coastal city of Presos ended up in a disagreement with their neighbor, Hieropitna, Hieropitna? over a minor land dispute. We have been asked to arbitrate over the matter at hand, but it is clear that both settlements will harbor a grudge. Where the heck is Presos? In Crete. So, these two guys, I would get taxes and upset the other with unrest. You produce only commerce income, you produce some tax. So, I guess between the two of those, I kind of have to choose Presos, right? 51 civilization value, that's not bad. What's my capital looking like? 52, wow, okay. I've not been paying attention to civilization, but we're actually doing really, really well on that front. Am thrilled. Okay. Cool beans. Uh, we got a thousand gold. We should spend it on something. You know, we could use a couple more marketplaces in Nicopolis, so let's do that. You don't have enough population yet for anything else. Could move some pops around. You guys already have your buildings. So do you. I could promote these freemen to citizens, and with a couple of marketplaces, that wouldn't be a bad idea. So we get a little bit more research out of that. Maybe the same exact situation over here. Build another marketplace. Sure. We probably should move slaves around to get things like glass. I do now have a uh, power cost reduction to do things like that. Cool thing about glass is, I believe, if you are exporting it, you get research points. Which is obviously quite nice. Although if you had the surplus move to the capital, you get some religious tech investment too, but I kind of like the research points. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea to move some slaves. The only problem is I really want inventions still. Ah oh well. Nice to see an event, by the way, down in Crete. More regional events and things happening. That's one of the big complaints that people have about the game is that there's not enough events, and I, I do kind of agree with that one. Um, you, you do need you do need more events, more regional flavor. Otherwise, as much as I am enjoying this game, I think that there is... Oh, hello. Hold up. Macedonian Revolt? That's another way to fight Macedon. If the Revolt wins their civil war while we are fighting them, they become Macedon and we're at war with Macedon again. Even so, what are the odds he wins... Depends. He'd have to get down over here somehow, and I'm not sure how he does that. 
Let's keep an eye on this, but this could be the opportunity as well to fight Mastodon a little early. Anyway, what was I saying? I don't remember. Things about flavors and stuff and some of the legitimate criticisms of the game. I, I, I agree. I think the big problem I have with the game, the biggest problem I have with the game, um, is that there's not as much replayability. I would probably play like three different campaigns. One is a monarchy, which we're doing now. Oh, hello, Egypt. Olives. All right. One as a tribe and one as a, like a republic or something. And that's probably all I would do is just three campaigns. And there's not enough variation to keep me playing after that. So I would still get about, I don't know, 60 hours of enjoyment from three really solid campaigns in the game, which is is worth the money. 40 bucks for that much that time? Yeah. I think is worth. But I understand the people who get a little upset and say that they want more than that. Totally get it. Would agree. Would like to see more replayability added. Absolutely. And I think that, that is going to be happening pretty soon, actually. Lose money, gain religious power. Research points? Hard not to say yes to that. Let's go ahead and spend the money. I think that's worth it for a while. Uh, and the reason I say that I think that's going to change relatively soon is because, if you guys have been paying attention to the dev diaries... Hello, Phrygia. Furs. Hemp. We do both of these. Sweet. Um, if you've been paying attention to the dev diaries, there are some big changes coming up pretty soon, including some more character interactions and such, which everyone has been calling for as well. So that's going to be exciting. Okay, they are winning their fights against the Macedonians pretty well. I don't know. Until I see these guys making enough progress and think that they're going to win their war, it's probably not worth getting involved with them yet. You still haven't picked up any new allies. You do have a defensive league with Serdia, but let's be honest, that does not matter too much. I'm going to go ahead and fabricate a claim on you. And then we have troops arriving. We'll see if we can kill all of you guys. I'd love to get Messinia and join my land up and make more progress here in Greece. Also a way of just getting rid of one of the guys who's currently defended by my ally, and that would just be a little awkward later, don't you think? I think so. Dardania, you have 18 cohorts. You are a tribe, that's why. You potentially could be a threat. I mean, some light infantry might struggle, but I think I have a great advantage with the cavalry, so we'll be fine. Eh, whatever. Alright, we can declare our war now. Let's go for an invention. What do we want? Pirate spawn? No. Discipline, starting experience. Taxes are good. I don't care about tribesmen. Freeman output is not a bad idea. Gref's ex uh, expansion impact reduction. So mostly... I don't care about subjects of uh, loyalty. Aggressive expansion impact reduces the higher your aggressive expansion goes up. Really? Doesn't feel right. I guess it scales in a weird way. Mainly, anyone who is not of the Epirote culture is upset from aggressive expansion. I think the biggest issue is that I have a lot of diplomacy issues. I don't think we need to pick that up. Omen power is okay. National manpower plus 5%. We have a cap of 132k? Really? Wow. So increasing that by another 5% would do a fair bit to increase my uh, manpower generation. So would things like National Freeman output, though, by the way. But I would think that a 5% increase is better than a 2.5% increase from Freeman, right? Taxes are tempting as well. I think I will go for the National Manpower increase, though. Because I'd like to be stacking up more manpower. As much as you will allow me. Alright, do we want to declare our war? I could call in Thrace, but I don't see the point. I think I'd rather let Thrace continue to just sort of regenerate their efforts. I'm not worried about Serdia. Let's go ahead and declare our war. Light infantry lead the way, cavalry to follow. Always the rule. Uh, okay, you want to import grain, national manpower plus 5%. Sure, I'll trade with the rebels for a bit. You won't be mad about that, Macedon, would you? So we are fighting you. Time to get in there. Uh, I mean, Pyrus can lead the charge. These are farmlands. There's no defensive terrain, but let's wait until we have... Well, let's see if we can get in here. Who arrives first? You arrive on the 9th. You arrive on the 26th. You arrive on the 25th. You're not going anywhere fast. We actually can afford to wait for a little bit. 
Oh yeah, now he's stopping. It's more what I would have expected. Okay, what's going on over here? Oh, you want to come after my light infantry, do you? With all 17,000 of these folks, let's wait until they lock. Sit tight. Are they locking? They've locked. Oh, crap. We don't have our... Ah! The cavalry weren't in position. I thought they could get there, but I was wrong. He's running away. No, he's locked. Again. Cavalry. Go get him. Well, this should work, right? Look at the cavalry go. They're going to slaughter the light infantry. Silly tribes. What did you think was going... What? What did you think was going to happen? Where did his troops go? Oh, there they are. Hello! All right, I'm going to let Pyrus lead the fight over here, okay? You sit tight in your corner until I'm ready to deal with you. You go over here. Whoa, cavalry assists. Okay, he has chariots. Cavalry apparently got there first, which is never a good thing to happen. Now we'll back out. We're not making any progress here until we reinforce for a little bit. The tribes are potentially dangerous, I will admit. All right, let's go ahead and move the cavalry over. I always prefer that these guys be in the... I forgot to use the shock, or change the tactics to my advantage, by the way. Wish I paid attention to that. It's a silly minigame. I'm, I'm really not sure I like it. Okay. Well, let's, let's sort of see what happens here. Let's make progress on the siege. I don't think he's going to attack me. But let's go ahead and send some heavy infantry up here to be safe. It's a long trip. But heavy infantry absolutely will slaughter the tribes. I don't see any way around that. Olives? Alright, 0.66 per month. That's pretty good. I don't like the attrition that we're taking currently. A venomous tongue. The governor is a particularly weasel-like man. A fact that is making itself clear now more than ever. He's begun stirring up the people of his governance, hoping to challenge our rule. Unfortunately, he is well regarded in this locale. Didn't we have an event where people wanted to have him thrown out? He is silver-tongued, by the way. Do not move against him. The province loses 50 loyalty? Holy crap! He really is trying to screw with me. So we can put it right into rebellion territory and imprison this guy, who, by the way, is pretty loyal to me. Let's not lose that much, but ouch! That hurts! Okie smokes. Didn't know that's didn't know that was a thing. I don't like it though. Alright, let's please win this fort as soon as we can. I just want to end this war. Uh somebody from Boetia offers friendship. Alright, let's be friends with our subject. That can't work badly for me. Surely. Macedonian Revolt is sieging down this fort. It, it could be worth attacking them. The Olympics! Okay. You want to attack me, do you? We have sacked something. Not that fort. Looting is gentle as usual. Okay, I'm going to get all the troops together and we're going to go kill these guys. And we did win the siege. Okay, so the hills are mine now. I can demand everything right now without... No, I can't. I assume I can't separate peace with you, by the way. Boetia, you're an idiot. Yeah, I can't sue for peace with you. So we really need to win this fight, and I don't have heavy infantry. He is locked... I'm going to group you guys up under his leadership with 13. Well, your one infantry here is going to have a really bad time. Uh, you're using envelopment, which is a bad tactic for you. More people joining in. I still have the flank, and now I don't. It's a little bit painful, but I think we're going to win just on the morale front at the very least. And sure enough, we are shattering him. So we're going to win that, but we just lost a lot of manpower in that fight. That hurts. Okay. Well, let's just go siege all of this. Um, how long until we can piece you out? 
You're retreating all the way up there? That's not fair. How'd that happen? How are you retreating? Where are you going? Are you running all the way up to Dardania? That's a long retreat, retreat route. We killed 4,000 troops just now. Another invention. Kind of like the ta- uh, Omen power? Ooh, that could be fun. Kind of like the taxes. But I think Omen power could be really nice to have. We also have more time on that. Let's go for the tax. I like the invention system in the game. Which I think is a bit controversial for some people. I don't think everyone likes it, but I do. And the reason I like it is it reminds me of Stellaris. It reminds me of uh, Stellaris because in that game, when you chose research and you finished that, you never knew what research was going to come next, right? And that meant that every time you chose something, like, every choice felt like it mattered because you never knew whether that was going to be the right choice or uh, if that technology you were, you know, kind of in second place was never going to come back. You never knew. And I found that to be a very entertaining thing. All right, we're going to go ahead and attach every non-cavalry unit. Again. Going to move you over here. We're going to have a proper heavy army. Infantry heavy army, I should say. Supply weight over here is not exactly great. 15, I prefer to do that. Or even better, just go here. I don't need a general right now. Uh, let's not worry about some cohorts being loyal to somebody else. You guys, tell you what, head up here. The Macedonian Revolt has sieged down everything. It's just a question of can they get down to this. The problem is I can't use the attack the vassal strategy so long as the Macedonian Revolt has them. Can I offer you... Why would you not accept military access from me? I want you to think that through for a second. Military access from me would allow you to go and siege down more stuff and win your war. But you are refusing. And that makes absolutely no sense. Oh good, we can sue for peace in Messenia. I'm going to take all your nonsense. Thank you. Let's go ahead and put down some of that aggressive expansion. So, cool, we've joined our land up again. Nice. We own a bit more of Greece. What about up over here? I don't care about these little guys in Serdia. They just don't matter. Sue for peace. Take both your provinces. Take your money. Tiny bit of aggressive expansion. Like 1.3. It's not that bad. And you are done as well. Okay. So, get a little bit more lands, got rid of Messenia, which is going to make Macedon a bit more vulnerable in the future. Still can't attack them directly, unfortunately. And I can't fight the guy that you're guaranteeing. What about you, though? Who are you? Oh, but you're guaranteed by Phrygia. Um, that's interesting. Iris, come over here, please. So, wait, if we do get to fight Mastodon when they're the overlord of a subject, would they call in these guys as a defensive league and we get to kill these guys and not worry about Phrygia? I like that idea. All right, let's see. Our magistrate died after eating a particularly rotten herring. I'm so sorry. I will send a fruit basket to your family. Scorned families are pithied. There's nobody really good that I can put in charge over here, so let's go for bleh, this guy. He's reasonable enough. About to get another oratory advance. Lack of a commander doesn't matter to me. People are supporting this guy to take over. I mean, he's a really good leader. I'll give him that. Holding a triumph would definitely increase his loyalty, but it would also increase his popularity. A chance to gain cognomen, which I have no idea what that means. Reward his veterans, lose personal loyalty, demand his support for heir, spend a little bit of power, but he's very likely to support me. I kind of wish that I was playing as a Republic. Republics are fun. I really think, though, that the game is about to change in a huge way uh, once this new patch comes through. Because of the co-consul system in places like Rome, but not only that, in monarchies, your wife is going to matter. Or husband, depending on what kind of kingdom you are. Queendom, I don't know. 
But, like, actually having a good spouse is gonna matter now. Hey, by the way, we're 50. We're getting old. So a spouse with stats that complement yours really well is gonna be huge. It's gonna change the way you play the game, I'm pretty sure. Lots of money in local tax. Uh, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's just do that. Alright, do I save up for more inventions, or do I start moving some slaves around to get ga uh, glass? An extra thing of glass, is what I'm trying to say. Um, we do have multi-tyranny assassination tribute. Don't care about any of these. Omen power upgrade is nice. Duration tech investment is nice. Freeman output before it's too late could be okay. 2.5% doesn't feel very consequential, though. If I'm being completely honest, I think I would rather just move my slaves over to Edessa. And produce the glass, export it if we can, and get a bunch of extra research points. I need two more slaves. There's a couple right here. Perfect. Edessa. Edessa. Now we have a surplus of glass. Okay. Hey, that works for me. Build myself another marketplace, because I can. So, do I declare war on the Macedonian Revolt? Do I think that they are going to win this war? Because if they win the war, they become Macedon, and that solves my problem. Alternatively, while we're sitting around and waiting, just a chance to grab some free land, and then we'll go and kill Macedon as well, but I don't know what happens to Paeonia. That's my problem. I just don't know. I don't know how any of this works. Hmm. Hmm. Who really could say? There we go. Now we can export the glass. Thank you! That bumps me up to 136% research efficiency. It's acceptable. Gosh, I wish the freaking guarantees would go away. There's got to be a way to get rid of guarantees. I don't suppose I could, like, threaten you for a war or anything. Threaten war, I have no claims. That's another thing that's actually going to change a lot in the next patch. And this is going to be really fun, I think. So, different government types are going to have different events that can fire, or, like, special decisions you can take. So, for example, for monarchies, every few years or whatever, they can host a uh, war council, and your advisors will help you decide where to get free claims. That's pretty cool, right? Freaking heck, I think so. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Freeman output. Let's just do it. Better Freeman across the board. It's one of the few things we're good at anyway. Gaining 500 manpower per month. That's a cohort every two months. Call to arms from Thrace. Uh-oh. You are fighting Byzantium and Heraclea Pontica. Who the crap is that? Little guy right here. Byzantium has no other allies. I guess I accept your offer. Though I don't intend on assisting you, you should be able to win your war without my help. And on the plus side, you just like me more. Just please don't waste all your manpower. You're heavily in debt. How did that happen? I don't know. You sure you don't want to have the military access? I'm just saying. If you had military access, you could win. What if I improved relations with you? Right? I could spend power, improve relations, and then you could go and win your war, and I could use that to win. You picked up a bunch of allies, by the way. Never mind. Wait a minute. This seems terrible. So wait, if I attacked you, we would fight the Macedonian Revolt that way. Possible defenders joining in. Well, suddenly this war is turning into something a bit more ugly, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Religious power. We are about to have an omen, but I think I'd rather just go ahead and stab a piggy. Okay, we're at max stability. 
So that's going to be nice. I think we'll be able to get enough religious power to do our next omen. In fact, we already can. So that's good. That helps my, relig uh, my research a little bit more, up to 142.6% now. And we're almost at the tech level where I can finally go for the next military tradition. Gosh. We've got so much military power. I'm just sitting around with no idea what to do with any of it. Abria. Abria. Abria, Abria, Abria. You're allied to too many people. Armistia? These guys. Could fight all of you in the Macedonian Revolt. How's your war going? Just says this is civil war. No, wait. Score is currently at plus three. That's it? After all this. Where's your capital? For real, though. Where is your capital? I guess I guess it has been moved down here because it's not like these is just siege land. It actually flips to the revolt. Oh, this is weird, and I don't like it. Still, I think we don't mess with them. Warrior's Honor. The battle-hardened soldiers have performed mighty acts of valor. He's requested permission to institute a particular form of service reward unique to his army. He would take offense. His troops become better. But there's a good chance that his troops are going to become loyal to him. And I'm pretty confident you already have some troops loyal to you. So, you've got a lot, actually. Six loyal to you. That's dangerous. Loyalty is not going down by much. Honestly, I think we might be okay. I'm gonna go for it. Let's do the military tradition now that the cost has been reduced down to only 520. And we can go for another one now. Cavalry skirmish tactic do it. Okay. Well, we got a slight discount by waiting as long as we did. Now we have some extra traditions. What do we get with this? Cavalry Skirmish. You're very good at it. This is good against Bottleneck and something in India only. Bad against Skirmishing and Phalanx. However, we have a ton of extra effective, uh, effectiveness. And we can always switch tactics later. To, say, envelopment or deception, depending on who we need to kill. Okay, this works. Yeah, with this particular general, we're in a really good spot. Am I worried about aggressive expansion? Not really. Do I want more research? Eh? I think I might go for back for the uh, population growth. Let's do it again. More population, please. How fast are we growing? 0.6 per month. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty good, I think. It doesn't feel bad, exactly. Question. Does Trireams require a thousand manpower? No. We can just build a bunch. Let's just build a few more Trireams. Let's just, let's just go for more ships. Having a really strong navy feels like a wise choice. And if it's not going to cost me manpower and only cost me money, great. I want to become a naval power. In fact, I'd love to become a naval power that dominates over Phrygia. Then we could take some cool stuff and we can just block him from coming after me. I think that makes a lot of sense. How you doing, Thrace? Pretty good? Alright, I'm gonna bring you... Slave output, 10%? That's just better taxes. Let's do that before we lose the civic advance. We got a little bit more time before we have to go through the religious tech. Omen power, omen duration, all of these are really good. But we'll see what we end up getting. Hang on. Monthly general loyalty is good. Siege engineers is good. Inventions, man. You need a lot of them. I no longer have a truce with Macedon. If there was a way for me to fight you. But there's not. That's the problem. Until you get a subject back, there is no good way for me to fight you. And I don't want to fight Phrygia. And this guy is defended by way too many people. So there's no way. There's no way to fight Macedon right now. Either the revolt wins while we're at war with them, or we wait until the re revolt or somebody wins, and then fight the subject. I think it's the only way we can do it. Commerce income goes up, wages go down, for all characters for some reason. So that's nifty. 
Okay, you got your siege. And he pieces out and the war is over. Thank you. Good job, Thrace. Good job, Thrace. I love you. Mwah. <sighs> Abria. Deorcia. I mean, that's the other alternative. We just kill the Macedonian Revolt so that the war actually ends. Then we can go back to killing these guys. Like, that's a way we can do things, too. We can just speed it up. But in doing so, we'd have to fight a few people. So we either... Yeah, if we do this, we're going to have to kill these guys over here. Which is not the worst thing in the world. I do want some of this land. Well, Pyrus, you grew hair! How'd you get your hair back? Nothing makes sense to me anymore. I'm flabbergasted. Let's end this video. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.